Okay, I'd like to introduce uh, Dan Goldman, and um, I will reset the timer. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. And go. <laughs> wow, you guys look so smart. Nice to see you. I'm Dan Goldman. How are you? Um, I am a writer and artist and publisher and experimenter of uh, comics and graphic novels, if you're sexy. And uh, I am... Um, I'm involved in this project that kind of changed the way I thought about do, uh, the way I approached my own work and what it meant to me and what it meant to the world. And um, I wanna share that with you, but I think before I get into this keynote, um, I'd really, I'm gonna just play a video real quick that will download some information in like a minute that will be faster than I can do. So just bear with me one second. Um, or maybe I won't, this is a pain in the butt. All right, let's just keep going. Um, so, um, boop, I'm touching it like it's an iPad. I'm so spoiled. Um, so, solidarity through comics. Um, I, uh, I've been working in digital comics, digital publishing, digital art uh, for 12-ish years, and um, I have a background in, uh, I guess, oop, that's wrong, um, a background in, uh, you know, just sort of, looking at systems and trying to explode them. And so I, um, I want to share with you, why is this not working? Uh, just, oh, because it's the last slide, which is the same as the first slide. I think I say, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> so uh, solidarity through comics, let's go. So um, so the project that I am here for uh, is, is actually, I, I, this presentation is not the one that is listed in the abstracts because I have been traveling for the last month or so across India, uh, launching the second project, the second volume of a series that I do called Priya Shakti. And um, what Priya Shakti is, is um, we've created a uh, sort of a female mythic hero for India who is a gang rape survivor who rides across India on a tiger fighting violence against women and discrimination and patriarchal bullshit with mantras and nonviolent methods. And um, so uh, I have been giving this talk across India and I'm, I, I felt like I was looking at what all of you guys are doing and, and uh, this felt more like where I'm at rather than what I had originally submitted to Peter. So sorry, Peter. Um, but uh, so here we go. So as I said, I, I do comic books about uh, rape. And, um, uh, but in, a, in a such a way that uh, I think that this kind of thing is needed. It's needed to talk about, uh, but it's also, I think that comics are uniquely suited um, to handle big issues in such a way that kids pick them up, young people pick them up, and it looks like entertainment. And we can subvert uh, a lot of sort of deeper moral constructs and, and societal and social constructs. Uh, by using something that looks like a roller coaster ride, like psychedelic mythic adventure, which is what Priya Shakti, the series, is. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. Uh, there's a tech G whiz factor that I was going to show you in the video, in that, and, uh, I'll, and we could talk about it. You can ask me about this later. Um, but all the pages in um, all the comics are uh, augmented reality enabled, which is, uh, has allowed us to. Um, be more interesting to uh, first world tech reporters and newspaper journalists, which um, is entirely deliberate. <laughs> because, you know, you, you access the media and they help the message spread. We've gotten an unbelievable amount of press and part of it is the message, part of it is obviously the work, and part of it is this gee whiz factor that is like, you know, like catnip to people, you know, who blog. Um, so, a little background. So I, um, I was, I, I'm in, based in LA now, but I, I was living in New York City for too long. And um, while I was living there, um, I went to a tech meetup in between projects, and um, it was the uh, Story Code chapter of New York, uh, which is like a transmedia storytelling thing. And I, I, I bumped into on my way out the door. I, I was looking for somebody interesting to talk to. I got bored. I was on the way out, and I, I, I literally bumped into Ram Devineni, who is a documentary filmmaker. Um, we started talking, he was telling me about this project that he had that was sort of like 
comics were a component of it, but it was something that was inspired by the Delhi bus rape in 2012 that made international news. It was like a horrific crime, and it sparked all these protests in the streets of, uh, in, uh, really all over India, but specifically in Delhi. And Ram was in Delhi at the time working on a different uh, documentary. And uh, the more he was telling me about this, and, and he had these different components where he was remixing old public domain Bollywood films and uh, you know, kind of recutting in, it into a different story, which I thought was neat. And I, I, you know, I love electronic music, so like remixes are cool. And uh, but the more he told me about it, I said it really feels like there should be like the comic is the main thing here. Um, I wasn't angling for a job really, but um, it turned into one. And uh, so I didn't really know Ram. I didn't know his work, and we we he followed up with me about 30 minutes after I got home. Uh, and we started talking, and we worked together for, I would say, about six or nine months in the development process of this with our whole team of, of partners, and, and, and Priya Shakti became what it is. And so this is art from the first chapter of Priya Shakti, which is tall and entitled Priya Shakti. And um, this is Priya, who is a, 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 a very normal-looking village girl. She's supposed to look like the girl next to you in school, the girl that you see on the bus, or waiting for the bus. And um, we see her at the village market, and she's groped. We see her at home. We see how she has dreams of being a teacher, and her father's like, you're just going to get married and have some kids. And, um, and we see what happens to her. We see that she's attacked, and she's raped by several guys from her village that she knows, that she knows from school. And um, the goddess Parvati is watching her and incarnates down into her body and sort of unlocks and blossoms this power within her that enables her to, uh, to make some changes of her own. Um, she winds up meeting uh, her, her friend who is Sahas the tiger, uh, who uh, it's, the, Sahas sees the strength in her and is, recognizes like, you know, tiger, tiger to tiger, like, hey, what's up? So they, they travel together and um, the, the symbol of Priya riding the tiger is, um, it's, it sort of resonates off of the image of Durga uh, in, in Hindu myths. Uh, but instead of Durga uh, bearing weapons, Priya is nonviolent. And so what we have tried to do with this, uh, I sh so th this project was funded um, by the uh, Tribeca uh, Film Institute New Media Group. and. Um, and we've been working with um, the UN uh, Women's Council. Priya, the character, has been named a, a UN Women's Rights Champion for gender equality. And um, it's really, it's spread. Things have been crazy. So we, um, we wrote the story in such a way that we would create, uh, when boys read it, they would feel empathy for what happens to the girls. Um, when women read it, girls read it, they would feel solidarity. They, would, they know someone who's been raped or they, have been, you know, raped or groped or something themselves, and there's you know, build a solidarity. And I think that between those two things, across both genders and everything in between, uh, it's our hope that uh, that there's this sort of separation between genders that is an old social contra construct that exists all over the world. And I think that empathy and solidarity can lead to the erosion of that separation, and we just become people. And um, that's really what we're pushing for. Um, so we did this first comic, got on an, uh, got on an airplane. Right before uh, I met Ram at JFK, uh, he went on BBC News and he went on Al Jazeera. And um, then we got on the flight. It was, I'd never flown Air India before. I, I should mention that I've actually, I had, had never been to India uh, throughout the course of this first book. I did a lot of immersion, uh, a lot of research. I looked at comic books, I looked at Bollywood films, I ate a lot of delicious food, listened to a lot of cool music. But I was finishing another project um, while I was waiting for uh, the script for the first book to come in. And I just immersed myself in Indian culture and I asked a lot of questions. We had all these, uh, you know, these team members with us that were able to help me learn and not make mistakes about like the way saris are tied and you know, what facial jewelry belongs with what cast. And, you know, there are specifics that, that I don't know. I'm the only non-Indian on the team. And it was really, you know, the, all the visuals are on me. And it was really important for me to, to get it right. Um, 
So we landed in Delhi and uh, had a connecting flight to Mumbai, and both Ram and I both turned on our phones, and the BBC interview and the Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera interview went like crazy viral, and uh, our phones almost exploded uh, like a Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> I had to do it anyway. So, um, but uh, but yeah, the, the the comic went super viral, and um, it was uh, so far beyond anything that we had thought about or even prepared for, and the whole world wanted to talk to us, and I mean, we were literally answering hundreds of interviews and, and uh, you know, for, for weeks, and, and even people were, were contacting us a year, a year and a half later uh, for academic reasons and having us come speak, and, um, and somewhere along that point, I think we realized that, you know, holy shit, like the world needs this and wants this, and our work is very far from done. Um, that's an incredibly rewarding idea when you're you're doing something that is this intersection of, um, you know, a motif that I personally love, and then this social activism, and then having NGO partners waiting to receive the work when you're done with it and use it as a tool for maximum impact. And I think that there, there's a Venn diagram there of uh, how to build a project out that. Uh, illuminated something for me that I think I'm gonna be carrying forward for a long time. Um, we marched, uh, when we launched Priya Shakti in, uh, in uh, India, it was the two year anniversary of, of the, the bus rape in Delhi, and we marched from where we had a mural painted in Connaught Place in Delhi to the bus stop where that rape happened. And um, we marched with all these girls who were uh, rescued by uh, Apne Ap, who's one of our um, our NGO partners. The, these girls were all rescued from prostitution or sex slavery, and um, they marched with us. A lot of these girls are rape survivors too. Um, and uh, you know, to be there, seeing them, oops, seeing them chanting, and holding up signs in Hindi with my characters, and and like some image that that I created, you know, from my shitty studio apartment in Brooklyn, uh, becoming like the face of this larger movement on the other side of the world it was amazing. So, uh, so like I said, we, um, we realized that the work was far from done and um, Ram was in India and met some acid attack survivors by chance and thought he would sit down and, and interview them formally and all of a sudden that became the next book which is Priya's Mirror which we, we've, these are some of the women that, that were uh, the inspiration for the stories in the book um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with, the, with, with acid attacks as a phenomenon, but I was not. Um, they do happen here in the States and in Canada, but nowhere near the frequency that they happen in other parts of the world. Um, India's really, um, I think that there are uh, probably 1,500 attacks like this every year. Um, there are more in Colombia and in, um, in Peru, actually. Um, but uh, India's up there. Um, all of these women have an amazing story. They're all incredibly strong people, and um, a lot of what they've endured to uh, be comfortable in their own bodies again and, and, and then enter into a society that doesn't want to see them anymore and doesn't want to address you know, this topic. It, I, to say it's taboo makes it feel forbidden, but in fact, it's, it's really just invisible. People just don't want to know. They don't want to deal with it. And so we decided to do a comic book about that. And um, so Priya's Mirror launched in, um, as part of the New York Film Festival about a month ago. And uh, you know, I got to do a comic book launch at Lincoln Center. So that, you know, my, my, my dad came in. And uh, that was great. Um, but this book is, uh, is very special. and. Um, Part of the thing that was really great for me was that I, um, I had been to India at this point, and I got to make my India, this fantastical, mythic India that Priya and Priya's, you know, everybody she knows, uh, that where they live, I, I got to make it feel more real based on my own travel and my own experiences. Um, so we see, you know, there's a, there's a castle that is, there's this man, Ahankar, who is holding all these acid sur attack survivors hostage, or is he? And um, Priya receives a mirror, a magic mirror, that she uses to fight 
in a nonviolent way by, it's a mirror of love and it shows these women uh, not their own faces, but it shows them like everything that they, they felt that they were before their attacks and everything that they hoped they would be in the future and everything that they can be in the future and kind of unfreezes them in time, which is really what traumas do, whether they're physical or whether they're sexual, psychological. Um, it unfreezes these, these women and they cease to be victims and, they, and they're, they're able to just move on with their lives. Um, I don't know why this is in here. So there's, a, there's other little subtext to the book, books and the series as well uh, that the Indian press really appreciated that might have slipped by um, you know, non-Indians or non-resident Indians uh, here in the States. Um, Priya, as you can see here, uh, maybe not in this one, but, but Priya is actually very dark and uh, dark skinned. And um, that was my choice because I knew it would piss a lot of people off. Um, but there's an incredible amount of colorism in India where everybody is like a shade of brown, but where you are on that brown spectrum and they have very funny names like Weedish. <laughs> and uh, you know, you go to the, the drugstore and there's all kinds of you know, skin bleaching products and all sorts of makeup that are designed to, I don't know if, if it's a holdover of, of the caste system or, or what, but um, it, it's very surprising in a, in, a, in a country like ours where you know, it, we have like black, white, brownish, and yellow, and all of a sudden there's like this just brown spectrum that people have intense feelings about. And so I had a lot of like upper caste uh, Indians uh, kind of pissed off at me about this. And, but I had a, all the dark skinned people were like, you are a, a hero for doing this. And there, are, there is no one in this country that is creating protagonists, certainly female protagonists, certainly gang rape survivor, dark skinned female protagonists, like what you have done. And it has been an incredibly powerful thing for a lot of young people. Um, and it was just a Pantone change that I'm, I think is one of, <laughs> one of my finest moments. Um, the other thing is that you know all the protagonists in Priya Shakti and in Priya's Mirror and, in, and going forward, um, Everybody, every, the whole storyline is female forward. The, the, the women are the agents of change. The women are the solvers of solutions. Um, the, without being, um, what's the fancy word? Without being man-haters, um, misanthropes, um, you know, we wanted all the solutions. We wanted everything to come from, from you know, the women characters and we wanted them to be uh, softer, and we wanted them to feel like female choices rather than action-oriented male choices because that never ends well. Um, so I, as I said, I was just traveling across India for about a month, and um, we were doing a lot of promotions, and we did a lot of, you know, a lot of talks, a lot of events, and um, we did a side trip for a few days to Kolkata, uh, where we um, we worked with people in Apniap again. Um, we went into Sonagachi, which is the largest um, red light district in Asia. And uh, it was another universe. Uh, I have never experienced anything like it. And we heard heartbreaking stories. We talked to a lot of sex workers who were sold by parents or friends or siblings or, they, they, or they went themselves you know, to earn money. Uh, they were promised good jobs. And you know, look, it's not what happened. And, um, they, uh, you know, they are considered fresh uh, between the ages of 11 and about 19, and then business starts to taper off. Uh, most of the men, the customers, their Johns, they want um, girls, I would say, like, you know, under 16 uh, for sex. And um, a lot of the women that we talk to, we, I mean, we talk to all ranges, but a lot of them are just concerned with. Um, making sure that their own children don't wind up, you know, being prostitutes as well. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little, this is a like, secret that I haven't talked about this in public yet, but um, so Ram and I were in uh, Sonogachi and we talked to these women, we conducted a lot of interviews, and, uh, and then we, we went out and had beer and, and talked about the story and, and we decided we're gonna go like completely Lord of the Rings with this and do like an underground sex trafficking city. So this is, um, this down here is called a stepwell. Uh, which is a Rajasthani architectural feature uh, that when, when uh, India was uh, ruled primar primarily by Muslims, um, 
inside the temples, they would collect water in these step wells. And so we're going to have the entrance to this secret underground city, which is like a, you know, a, a haven of prostitution and slavery and trafficking, will be accessed by going underwater and coming out into this cave system. It's going to be like, a, like an underground pirate city. I, I have no idea how I'm going to draw this. I'm kind of terrified, but I think the idea really turns me on, and I like challenges. So, all right, so rape, acid attacks, sex trafficking, sex slavery. Obviously, I'm doing comic books. I have no illusion that this is going to fix these problems. But what we can do is change people's minds, and what we can do is reach people young. And I think that um, for some of these systems, I, I, I feel that if you, if you look at <clears throat> young people's culture, everyone's connected online globally. Uh, gender is changing. The idea of gender, gender is changing. I mean, we go, we'll go from rigid to fluid to maybe not an issue. And uh, I think that that's a really good start. Um, but I think that we need people that have the, that are very firm in these kind of like rigid patriarchal beliefs and you know this very male dominated worldview uh, sooner or later they'll get old and die and uh, things will get a little better for everybody else afterwards so we're trying to do our part by um, changing people's minds giving them uh, solidarity giving them the right kind of characters to empathize with uh, when they're young and uh, and we see what happens from there um, this is my kind of Twitter, Instagram deal, but you know, I, uh, I don't know, it makes me happy every time I do it. Um, so Priya's mission then, um, instead of fighting rape and instead of just fighting uh, you know, issue by issue, the overarching mission for this character is to disrupt the patriarchy. And, um, and none of the issues that Priya faces are Indian issues. They're issues that every woman, and not just women, face all over the world every day in every country and the idea of not solving these problems in India but solving these problems from India into the world and and watching the way that the ripple kind of spreads it has been uh, inspiring and also like a promise that I think we you know we're just doing our best to follow up with um, so we have our message coming from the comic page so, you know, this is from the first book where Priya is preaching and, and we see, you know, changes happening across India as she travels. And, and then these changes come into our world. There's supposed to be some photos there, hold on. Yeah, to our world, yeah. So, um, so one of the things that we've created, or that I created, is um, a single icon for what this, this movement will center around. And, uh, and that's this. So this has been, this is our, our iOS Android app where you can read the comics for free. But we also have this image painted on murals. And we have uh, six murals now. We just did one in Bangalore a few weeks ago. Uh, these are augmented reality based or, or enabled. And, um, but you know, we have them in, in rich areas. We have them in poor areas. People walk by, they think it's Durga. And then it'll have instructions on, you know, how to access, you know, you, like you like download this app and then point it at the wall and they do that and then the wall comes alive with animation. There's buttons here, download the comic directly to your phone, go to the website, look at the trailer, here's videos of uh, rape survivors and acid attack survivors that, that have, you know, that we're involved with and we're working with. And, you know, you have these, this kind of like invisible data that, that lives inside of a mural all over the place, and we're hoping to do a lot more of these. This is the last one we just did in um, in Bangalore. Um, as well, we're doing, you know, for us, it's, uh, uh, the, the project at the moment is funded by the World Bank, and so we're able to do uh, educational programs with the Lions Club. I'm going back to India in January to do two different uh, U.S. State Department uh, funded um, workshops for people to Tell, use comics and technology to tell stories about you know their lives and social change oriented kind of things, and um, that's what we're doing. So uh, uh, you can read the comics for free. Everything's for free in many languages. PriyaShakti.com. Uh, we have that hashtag. Stand with Priya. Uh, all I ask. I, I'm I'm here all weekend uh, or 
you know, the next two days. Uh, I'd love to talk to everybody. Uh, if you have ideas about helping us make more of an impact, spreading the work further, um, please come talk to me, or please hit me up online. Um, I'm on every social, that handle. And um, thank you. <laughs>